So we are in line uh, 13. He's, it says, but as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, an acceptable time. O oh God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear me in the truth of your salvation. Deliver me out of the mire and let not my and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters, let not the flood water overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut its mouth on me. Huh? <laughs> um, okay, so he started off with asking God to save him out of all of these things. He was sinking. Uh, he was weary from all his crying. He talked about those who hate him without a cause and about his foolishness, about how sin is not hidden. Uh, he talked about his reproach how he's uh, his shame, he's a stranger, he's grieving. Uh, all right, and then so it starts off with a but, and you can't help but to love the but because it shows that transition, that contrast. Okay, it was all of this, and then, okay, now it's this. Almost like a the whole stanza is like an antithetic parallelism if you really look at it and so he's saying but as for me it's like he's changing you know he's changing this too he did all that crying all that grieving and so now but as for me like it was like it wasn't him in the beginning saying all of this like it was somebody else and like he's saying okay now but as for me my prayer is to you well, who was you before this, okay? So, but as for me, my prayer is to you, O Lord, in the acceptable time. O God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear me in the truth of your salvation. And so he knows that uh, God's mercy and God's salvation is needed and necessary. In the multitude of your mercy. God, that's a lot of mercy. And we need it all. <laughs> and, and so it says, hear me in the truth of your salvation. Deliver me out of the mire. Remember that mire is that mud. And so it's like he, he stuck in that mud. And he asked God to deliver him and let him not sink. All right, and then if he's going to sink, it's like that mud is turning to what, like quicksand. All right, and so it says, let me be delivered from those who hate me. So he's asking God to just go ahead and uh, deliver him from um, being uh, sunken in, deliver him from those who hate him, and then and out of the deep waters. So not only out of the mud, but out of the deep waters as well. And let not the flood water overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up, and let not the pit shut its mouth on me. All right, so when, you know, that pit, you go you go into that pit, and then everything, what, you know, you could just start throwing dirt over you. And so he's saying, not lot, net lot, the, net, let not the pit shut its mouth on him. That's covering him up. All right, and then so, and let's move it to the next stanza. 16, hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies and do not abide, excuse me, do, and do not hide your face from your servant for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily, draw near to my soul and redeem it, deliver me because of my enemies. And so now he's asking God, he started off in what? Asking God to save him. Now he's asking God to hear him. Hear me, O Lord, for your loving kindness is good. All right? So in, in God's loving kindness is good. It's a, it's a very kind love that God has for his children. And he says, turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies. 
So he asked God to turn to him uh, for, you know, because of the tender mercies that the Lord has. And 17, and do not hide your face from your servant. And remember, we talked about uh, when we feel like God has hidden his face because why well, God cannot look at sin. All right. Because if he does, he has to do something about it. And so that's what he's feeling like that, you know, he has sinned and God is turning away from him. But he's asking God to not to turn away from him or not to hide his face from him. Because why? He's in trouble. And he wants God to hear him not slowly, but speedily. And then this is 18 that, that takes on our uh, theme about drawing near. Draw near to my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of my enemies. So he's asking God to draw near uh, to him um, and to redeem his soul. That means to pay his, uh, for his soul and to deliver him because of his enemies. All right. Now, uh, remember, uh, Jesus said that, you know, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. All right. And so, and all we have to do is that, you know, instead of asking God to draw near to us, we really need to be drawn near to him. And we can draw near to him by just what? Lifting him up. Okie dokie. But when God does draw near to us, all right, then evil, weakness, and everything has to flee. It has to take a back seat because that evil cannot stand in the presence of God. And so when God is near us, that evil has to flee from us. That's powerful right there. All right, so we'll pick it up in our next segment.